The life expectancy for Hezbollah leaders is getting pretty short these days. In the early morning hours of October 4th, Israel struck several buildings near Beirut, Lebanon, reducing them all to rubble. The target of the strike was Hashem Sefiadin, the cousin of and apparent successor to Hassan Nasrallah, Hezbollah's founder and longtime leader, who himself was killed less than a week prior in another massive Israeli airstrike. Sefiadin was reportedly meeting with what's left of Hezbollah's senior leadership. It was not immediately clear before publish time whether anyone survived the strike. Israel is demonstrating what almost absolute intelligence understanding of another organization looks like. John Moloch is an active duty U.S. intelligence officer. This is an interesting scenario because Hezbollah is without a doubt reeling. It is, it is true to say that at times, if you just cut off the head of an organization, if the organization is strong enough, another person can, um, can find its way into the leadership position and the, and the organization can kind of stumble forward and, and regain its feet, if you will. This is not the case for Hezbollah right now. In addition to targeting Hezbollah's leadership, the IDF is also going after the group on the ground in southern Lebanon. This marks the fourth time Israel invaded Lebanon, but Molik thinks Israel is in a much stronger position this time, and all the work the IDF did to prepare the battle space seems to be paying off. It's disorganized, the, the, the Hezbollah response. There's you know, indirect fire attacks and they're throwing some squad level elements at the Israelis, but you know they just don't have a central command from Beirut right now, and it's going to be... I hate, to, I hate to use the word easy, but it isn't going to be as challenging for Israel to conduct the operations in southern Lebanon against these Hezbollah fighters up to the Latani River this time as it was a few decades ago because Hezbollah is just not in a place to respond in any organized way. So not only is Israel in a stronger position this time around in terms of a conflict in uh, southern Lebanon with Hezbollah, uh, I think in terms of signal intelligence, human intelligence, Obviously, Hezbollah's command structure is decimated, uh, but Israel also won't have to deal with many of the same constraints that the battle space in Gaza presented. So let's take a look at that. Obviously, map of the Middle East. Here is Israel. We got Lebanon to the north, Syria, Jordan, uh, Egypt over here. Uh, this area right here, this is Gaza, right? The Pre-war population in Gaza was more than 2 million people, right around 2.3 million people. They were all packed into this very tight space. Israel had blocked off and closed all of the uh, uh, border crossings from Gaza into Israel. Uh, Egypt had blocked the border from, from Gaza into Egypt as well. So you just had a lot of, of human um, potential collateral damage in the area that, that really constrained what Israel was able to do. There was a lot of urban warfare, building to building, uh, fighting between Israel and Hamas. Uh, obviously, the underground tunnels uh, were a huge concern. So the fighting in Gaza is just, it's a different style of fighting than what Israel might be facing in Lebanon, where there's open fields, uh, you know, there's not as it's it's not as tightly uh, densely populated certainly uh, in southern Lebanon as it as it was in Gaza. Um, so there's there's just a, a difference in fighting. Now this this yellow line right here is the uh, Latani River. You heard uh, John Moloch mention the Latani River, and Israel wants to clear Hezbollah fighters uh, in this 30 kilometer range between the northern Israeli border and the Latani River. 30 kilometers would be able to push Hezbollah back far enough that most of its artillery and rockets uh, would be fairly ineffective uh, against, against attacking Israel's north, which is why, Moloch says, for Israel, it's worth it to take the time to do this operation right and not rush anything. For, you know, people watching movies and TV, they hear a phrase, slow is smooth, smooth is fast. Um, is that... Is that the similar kind of situation where by Israel taking it slow now means that they'll be able to get the operation done quicker than if they just move really quick right now and then they're all of a sudden caught in a long, drawn-out operation? Is that is that kind of the thinking? 
Yeah, that that's a fair analogy because the the whole purpose of the operation isn't to seize territory. For example, that's that's what Russia wanted to do initially. They wanted to seize Kiev. It wasn't about you know killing every single Ukrainian soldier and taking every single town on the way there. This operation in Israel is different. It's not about seizing territory. It's it's about literally taking care of eliminating whatever the language you want to use every single munition point and every single soldier so if they take it slowly now and they're able to verify validate they've removed all of those locations and all of those personnel they can head back to israel open up a clear space for those 60-ish thousand israelis to return to the north and then hezbollah is going to have to take years and years and years in order to reestablish itself and and potentially israel isn't going to let that happen like they did before and that and that's kind of for another discussion but at least at right now israel wants to make sure that there is zero hezbollah left in any place south of the latani river so it's a good analogy to say slow is smooth and smooth is fast in this in this instance and if israel is successful at pushing hezbollah back and maybe dismantling the organization Moloch says that could open up room for Lebanon's official army to return to the region and maybe help prevent another Iranian-backed proxy from setting up shop. For Straight Arrow News, I'm Ryan Robertson. For more of our reporting on the war between Israel and Iran's axis of resistance, be sure to download the Straight Arrow News app today or log on to san.com.